Welcome, Mindsetters. It is a Tuesday afternoon. You're hanging out with Looney and the awesome Tracy. Oh, Tracy, how are you doing? Good, than you? I'm good, thank you. So yeah. what are we doing for today's show? Well, today we're going to carry on with circuits. So pretty much what we're going to do today is we're actually going to do a couple of problems. So okay. we're gonna, we've are gonna we done all the theory, we're going to revise a little bit of the theory, and then we're going to get stuck in and do some problems because it's all about the circuit problems, which is all normally right. a, a problem. Okay, can yeah. we just send you to your board? Oh, if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> Mindset is remember, in order to keep in touch with us during the show, grade 10s, you go onto facebook.com forward slash learn extra where you can post all your questions, any comments you may have about the show, anything you want to ask us, guys, based on your lesson today, electric circuits, guys, grade 10s, electric circuits. I had fun with this because my dad taught me how to connect all the wires and all of that. On Twitter, our handle is at Learn Extra. Remember, you can contact us, guys. Ask any questions you may have. Remember, on Facebook, I do post the notes and everything else you may need, guys, to keep in touch with us throughout the whole show. So don't you sweat it, guys. We'll be in touch. We'll be interacting with you guys, helping you throughout the whole lesson. Remember to download the show notes, the videos, the schedules, past papers, and any other rev revision material that you may need, guys. We do have stuff on Learn Extra today forward slash live to help you for the upcoming exams and for those of you who have started with the exams all the best of luck for you with the rest of the exams i hope you guys do great and remember to watch learn extra live every day to help you with everything that you may need with all that said guys we have such exciting stuff for you today but i'll mention all of that later on during the show I'll hand it over to Tracy. Oh, thanks, Looney. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying not to steal the <laughs> nice stuff because um, stealing is bad. <laughs> but it's okay, I will be the adult. Anyway, moving on. So we're going to look at circuits, guys. This is such an important section. The thing you've got to remember here, grade 10s, is this is going to be examined in your grade 12 exam. All right, so you're doing it now. I know grade 12 seems like a long time away. It's two years away. You're like, I can't even think that far. We understand that, but you've got to, got to, got to get this done. So I want you to stay with me, okay? We're going to do, I've got a whole bunch of circuit problems that are on the website, so make sure you download them. You need the circuits, okay? Now, that said, I desperately want to be able to help you on Facebook and that sort of thing, but if it's a problem related to a circuit, we need to see the diagram, unfortunately, because sometimes, because I can't actually do it without a diagram, okay? So I need the diagram, so be careful when you send it through to us, okay? We actually had that a couple, last week, I think it was, hey? We had a question come through, and I was like, well... I need to see the diagram to actually be able to help you because the diagrams are very important, okay? So what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to discuss resistors, voltage, current in parallel and series circuits. We have done that the last couple of weeks, but we're just going to solidify it again. And then we're going to do some circuit calculations. So today, no fun experiments, no blowing anything up. Not that I've done that, which is a good thing. And no playing with simulations. We've got to get down to the nitty gritty, okay? So here we go. This is just to remind you, if we look at a series circuit, ooh, and you can't see the blue, but it's all right. Series circuit simply means that I have a single path for the current to flow in. So I'm hoping you all have some colored pens with you. I'm going to do this um, with, uh, we're going to, you know, I don't, I can't, we're going to use the blue one, yellow one for now. No, you can't see the yellow, so let's. Change, change the color. It's just the other ones are a little too. Let's change it to blue. There we go. Okay. So, oh, look, it's gone away. That was rude. Can I just say that was rude? This board doesn't like me. Anyway, there we go. Seriously. Okay. Let's do it in green. No, you can't see the green either. I tell you what. Let's just do it with the fancy ones. Okay, fancy, fancy ones. So the current goes through. Has nowhere else to go but it has to go straight through all the resistors. Remember, it's like an obstacle course. All the res resistors are in series, which means the current has to go through all of it. We don't lose any of the current along the way. We can't lose the electrons, okay? Current is the rate of flow of charge. The charge, all the charge has to go through it. But as it goes through, I'm just going to take this out so you can actually see what's going on. As we look at it, though, as the current goes through each resistor, it doesn't have to lose the same amount of energy in each resistor. It depends on the size of the resistors. If all three of these resistors are identical, then they will all have the same voltage. But that is unlikely to happen when it's in series. They're going to be a different size. So that means the voltage over each of these will be different. The current is the same. So what do we need to remember? First of all, when I have resistors in series, the to total them all up, I simply add them together. I go R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. Nice and simple, 
It's not difficult because remember, the more obstacles we have in a series, the harder it is for the current to get through. And current likes the path of least resistance. The second thing we need to remember is that the current is the same everywhere. Now, please look carefully here, grade 10. This is so, so important. When I refer to I1, I'm referring to the current through a meter one. You may not anywhere go A1 equals two amps as an answer. You may not do that. Even if I ask you for the reading on A meter A1, you may not say A1 equals something because A1 doesn't equal something. A is the symbol for an A meter. I'm looking for the current. So it has to be I1, I2, I3, I total, whatever the case may be. So please be very careful. But the important thing here is the current through A I1, A2, A3, A4, all the same. So if I know one, I know all of them. The next important thing here is that the voltage gets divided. So I, when I want the total voltage, I add all the other voltages together. So if I go back here, it means if I take V1, add it to V2, add it to V3, it gives me V total. Okay? Um, resistors in series, they are potential difference dividers. They are voltage dividers, and they increase resistance. That's why we would put resistors in series. The second way we can put resistors is in parallel. Now, this looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. But remember, now we've got an option. So the current comes along, gets to this point, and now we have an option. So some of the current can go, oh, no, I wanted to change pen color. That didn't work. So some of the color can go through that one. Some of the current can go through that one. And some of the current can go through that one. They all change. By the time they get to the other side, we have the same current coming out the end. This is very important. The current gets to split. It makes it easier. It also means that your total resistance gets smaller. Now, I do realize it's actually quite difficult to see, so I'm actually going to write the equation again. So when I'm right looking for resistors in parallel, I'll go 1 over Rp P plus 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Guys, I am going to deal with resistors in parallel during this section, and we're going to look very closely at the maths. It's very, very important because it's the one place where you make really, really silly, 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 silly maths mistakes, and that becomes an issue, okay? Now, I've already said to you that the current splits up, which means unless R1, R2, and R3 are the same, the current will not split up evenly. Current is lazy. Current will take the path of least resistance. So the smaller resistors will get the greatest amount of current. The bigger resistor will get the smallest amount of current, okay? But what does need to happen is the amount of energy that the electrons lose as they travel from one part to the other must be the same for all of them, which is what potential difference measures. Because when the, all the electrons come and have to join the circuit over here, they have to have the same amount of energy. It's like when you're driving on the highway, and it actually is just so irritating, it's why traffic ends up slowing down at peak time, is that people come on, when they join the highway, they don't always come on at the right speed, so they slow down so the people behind them that are already on the highway slow down to, to match that, okay? So if everyone could come off the slipway onto the highway at the same speed everyone else was driving at, we probably wouldn't get as many backups, but it's also because we've got so many cars. So let's not go there. But all of them are traveling, have to join the same highway, and they must be traveling at the same speed. They must have the same amount of energy. So the energy lost is the same, which means if we look at it in equation form, first of all, the total current through is split. So we would add the current through each of the branches to get my total, but the voltage is the same everywhere. Now remember, the little numbers, Vp, V total, v I, uh, V1, V2, I1, I2, all of those sort of things, those are names, okay? Just like Looney and I are both girls, okay? If we had to refer to the girl in the studio, who would we be referring to? Okay, we have to go the girl called Tracy, which would be girl subscript Tracy, so we know what we're talking about, okay? So those are their names, it's really, really important. Now, before we take a first, our first break, I have quite a simple circuit, which we're going to start with because it's a nice, easy one. So we look at the circuit and we go, okay, so there we go. We have a simple circuit. 
0.5 amps, all right, we have one resistor, 2.5 volts over the resistor, and a circuit now. I would love to use my colors, but I need you to be able to see where I'm going. I think the yellow will work now because it's, yeah, so where I go yellow, it goes all the way, so this goes yellow, I've just turned the circuit yellow, okay? So that means I actually had no options as to where the current could go. <coughs> Series circuit, now you're probably saying, why didn't I put any current through the voltmeter? Remember, the voltmeter has a very, very, very high resistance. No current's going to go through the voltmeter, okay? Otherwise, that would be a problem, so it doesn't actually affect, it does not add to the circuit. First thing they want is for you to calculate the resistance of the resistor. Now, grade 10s, please don't be try and take shortcuts or anything like that because that's when you start to get into trouble. So let's th see what I know. I know because it's all in yellow that the current through the resistor is 0 0,5 amps. I know the voltage because it was given to me is 2.5. Now I want to find resistance. I'm going to use Ohm's law. And Ohm's law says to us that R is equal to V over I. So we're going to go, okay, so I've got to go 2.5 divided by a half, and that gives me, and I have worked this out already, that gives me 5. Okay, so we have 5 ohms. Simple. What I would now do, all right, if this was a test or an exam, is I would go back here and I would say, that's 5 ohms. Anything you find out along the way, put back on your diagram, grade 10s, because you tend to forget. And circuit problems build on each other. So one question builds on the question before. Okay, so our next part. Still, we've got the same circuit. I'm going to say that was, ooh, no, I was going to put 0.5. That's ridiculous. That's 5 ohms. Now they say to us, if you add another resistor, the total changes to 0.4 amps. So we've gone from 0.5 amps to 0.4 amps. Current's got smaller. Okay, so now my current is 0.4. Oops. Is 0.4. They ask you, what is the total resistance? Now we've got to recognize something over here. That was the only resistor in the circuit. It had a voltage of two and a half, which means my total voltage is two and a half. Okay. So now we look at this and we go, all right, the voltage can't change because the power supply didn't change. It didn't change the batteries. So V equals two and a half volts. That means if we're going to now look at R equals V over I, because now we're doing total. So I'm going to change. Oh, geez, that's just terrible. We're doing total resistance. I'm going to do total. I'm going to put a little T there. I'm going to try and a T for those, okay? So we now know that this is two and a half, and I is naught comma four, and we put this into our calculators, and we got six comma two five ohms. What's important here? Resistance increased grade tens. That means I put the resistor in in series. Okay, that's very important. If I put the resistor in in Parallel, current would have increased, resistance would have decreased. So I've put it in series. Now they ask, what is this resistance? So we go, okay, well, if we look at C, our total is going to be the resistor we originally worked out plus my unknown resistor, which let's call Rx, okay? My total is 6,25. We worked out earlier that R was 5. So now this is a mass problem. And Rx equals 1,25 ohms. And essentially what I've done is over here, it's like I've gone, here we go. We don't, I don't think the board likes my nails. I'm going to blame my nails because they're glittery. 1,25 ohms. Add those together, I get 6,25, and we're happy. 
Okay? So grade 10 is the point is to do the step by step, little bit by little bit. Okay? Now, Looney, that's a good place to take a break because I have right. some more questions, but we won't even vaguely get those in the <laughs> few seconds before the break, but Thank we'll you. see them after. Yeah. Mindsetters, don't go anywhere because we've got some great stuff about After Earth coming up. Remember you to watch the clip and just enjoy the, the intro, guys, to the great movie that's coming ahead. Remember, it comes out June 7th, and you can stand yourself a chance to win two tickets and these great prizes, but I'll tell you more straight after this, guys, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back from that great trailer, Great Tens. I hope you guys are excited about After Earth just as I am. Remember to enter, you need to go to learnextra.co.za forward slash After Earth and enter in the following code word. Great Ten, your code word for today is life. Simple. You live it every day. Life. Ne? Life is your code word to enter. So learnextra.co.za forward slash After Earth. Enter your code word and remember... Life is your code word. And remember, guys, competition does close at 12 p.m. tonight. You can stand yourself to win. Oh, there's oh, some prizes, guys. Isn't it? So pen, seat, lights up when you switch it on. It does. So great, guys. Off to earth. It's a suede band, you know, when you, you wear it on your wrist. It's a notepad and this great T-shirt. And you can win yourself two tickets as well. So it's this great goodie bag with two tickets, guys. So remember, winners will be announced on tomorrow's show. Stand yourself a chance to win these great prizes, guys. I will post the code word on Facebook. I just like to congratulate Kuli Soramaite, who has won from last night's show. Congratulations to you. You've won yourself two tickets to go watch After Earth. Kuli Soramaite is who won from yesterday's show. So congratulations to you. Great things. Remember, life is your code word. I will enter all the information that you need in order to, in order to enter the competition on our Facebook page. Start a chance to win this great pen, this sweatband, this notebook, and this great t-shirt, guys. And those two tickets on top of all of that. Come on, guys. Just enter. Remember, 12 o'clock, the competition does close. So go on and type in that code word, life, guys. Life, 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 life. Don't forget it. Don't forget it, guys. After Earth should be in your heads right now because I've been repeating myself for like a million times already. So do enjoy that, guys, and I'll take us right back to Tracy. Thank you. Well, guys, if you don't enter, I'm taking that <laughs> home. I'm just saying. I particularly want the <laughs> pain in the sweatband. No, actually, I want all of it. I'm not allowed to, though. They told me it's, <laughs> not, it's only for you guys. I want to be a teenager. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to be a big girl. Um, no, seriously, guys. Such a cool competition. Looks like such a cool movie, so make sure you enter. All right. Now, question two. We have a circuit. It looks a little more complicated, but you know what, guys? We take it one step at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some colors, and we're going to see what happens with the circuit. So... Now, I'm not using my fancy, um, the fancy thingies with the stars and stuff, because I want you to see what the um, circuit, when I'm done, we need to be able to take notes from it. So I'm turning some of it yellow, because that's as it leaves the cell. Okay, it doesn't actually matter which way around you go. It gets to a point, and now it can change. It has an option, okay? So... This option, we're going to say some of it here is, an, it goes purple and some of my two disappears. Doesn't matter, that's one option. Um, if we now change it to, say, let's go green, okay. Now, that's the second option over here. And the current all comes together and it goes back into the yellow part, okay. So what happens is my circuit has got three distinct, well, it's got a series part, which is in yellow, and then it's got the parallel part. As soon as there's a, uh, sure, I'm half asleep today. As soon as there's an option, we have a parallel circuit. So now we have to think about it and go, even before we look, I'm not even going to look at the, the question right now. I'm going to go, let's see what I know. They say to me that A1 has a reading of 1,1 amps. They say to me, a3 is a reading of 0, 0,7. V1 has a reading of 4,4. 4. So straight away, before I even look at the question, I go, well, it's in parallel, which means V1, V2, V3 are all the same. So that's also 4,4 4 volts. And that's also... Wow. Okay, I'm going to get the board really doesn't like me today. I'm just going to write slow. 4,4 4 volts, okay? But now we look at the circuit and we go, hang on, wait. There's nothing else in the circuit but that parallel section. 
which means there's nothing else for the, par for the voltage to be used up in. So that means my total is also 4,4, four, okay? Then we say, all right, let's see what we've got. And really what I'm doing is I'm filling in stuff that doesn't take me, that doesn't need me to do any calculations per se, all right? So I'm not trying to, if, if I had to work out the arm parallel or anything like that, I'm going to do that now. I'm just trying to put in the information that's easy. And now it says, well, if that's A3 is 0, 71, A1 is 1, 1, A1 is the total, 0, 7 amps is used in the one part of the parallel, so that means A2 over here has got 0, 4 amps available, because 0, 4 plus 0, 7 is 1, 1. So we go, okay, well, what's the first question? What is the reading on the ammeter at A2 in the circuit? What have we just done? We've just calculated it. You can't just put the answer down. You have to show how you get there. So we go, okay, we know what we were looking for, so we go, fine. I total, okay, is going to be equal to, not I, I'm lying to you. I, and in fact, this case, it would be I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, I1 was 1, 1, I2 is what we're looking for, I3 is 0, 7, there we go, done, nice and easy, and it's written onto a diagram, we're sorted. Now it says, what is the reading on the voltmeters at V2 and V3? So we go back and we say, well, you know what? We actually just did that. We just worked it in because we realized that they're in parallel. So we go, okay, fine. V2 is going to be equal to V3, which will be equal to, what, did, what was it called? V1, which then means it's equal to, let's go back, 4,4 4 volts, okay? Please be careful, grade 10s. You do need to show me that you recognize that they're equal, okay? Or that they're at least equal to V1. That's actually really, really important. So please don't forget that. Now, this is an interesting question. because It says to us, what will happen to the total resistance if you add another resistor? Of course, that depends on how you add the resistor. All right, so there's a bit of a problem with the question, okay, and I've done it deliberately because I want to show you something, okay. If I add the resistor, so say we go number one, let's add it in series, okay. So we're going to go here and we're going to say, okay, let's take out all my writing just so I can create some space over here. Let's make, can I make it a bit bigger? There we go. So let's just get rid of all my nonsense. All right, and now I say to you, fine, add another resistor, and let's add it in series. Now, what I need you to remember here is I will add resistors in series because it increases the total resistance, okay? And often, in any circuit boards in your home, there will be resistors that appear to have no real function. Their function is to increase resistance in the circuit. Why? Because we need to decrease the current. So if I add another resistor in the circuit in series, the total current will decrease. Okay? So we go here and we say, fine, if I add in resistance, what would happen to the total resistance if you add another resistor? Well, the R total, if it's in series, okay, R total will increase. Now, what's important, and it wasn't asked in the question, but you need to remember that this means that current total will decrease. Okay? Current total will decrease. What won't change is the total voltage from the battery. Okay? The total voltage from the battery cannot change. That is so important that you get great tens. It's what I'm getting from the battery. However, the reading on V1 would change. Absolutely. 
The current's going to get smaller. V1 will be smaller. Plus, I've now got to split it between the two. So generally, in this case, because it's so small, it's a bad idea to add the resistor in series. But what would happen if instead of in series, I added another resistor in parallel? So in other words, I'm saying to you, over here, let's put another resistor. There we go. I've now added the resistor in parallel. I've now given the circuit more options. The more options they have, so in other words, what I'm doing here, I'm saying let's add it in parallel. I'm giving it more options. More options mean less resistance. So that tells me that my total resistance decreases. Okay. And just as a little bit of a hint, this is something for you to remember. When you're looking at resistors in parallel, your total resistance in parallel is always smaller than the smallest resistor in the parallel section. So you can have a 1 ohm resistor and all the rest can be 700 ohms, 1,000 ohms, 10,000 ohms, whatever. doesn't matter. But if you add all those resistors together in parallel together, you're going to get a value less than 1. That's what makes parallel so special. Also, remember that in parallel, the nice thing with parallel is if one of the resistors breaks or they blow and current can no longer go through it, all the rest will still work, which is how your lights are fixed are done at home, which is a good thing, which is actually a good thing because remember we get told almost every night that we need to save energy, we need to only have lights on that we need. Could you imagine if that meant that if you switched one light off, all the lights in your house went off? That would just be a real issue, okay, because, you know, you might be in your bedroom trying to study, which is what we're going to assume you're going to be doing after this because you're going to be good. You're going to switch off the TV after this great change. You're going to go and study. And then you go and switch your light on, and then your baby brother or sister who mommy has just put to bed because they're little, and then their light goes on and, uh, and wakes him up there would be chaos in the house. Okay, so that's a good thing. If my total resistance decreases, that means my total current increases. More options. However, total voltage does not change. Okay, you've got to get this. The total voltage from the cell, or batteries in this case, does not change. It is set. Also, in this particular case, when I added in parallel, V1 doesn't change either because I've still only got one thing in the circuit, which is the parallel section, which means the voltage stays the same over that parallel section. Now, great tense, I haven't actually introduced any new concepts to you. We're just trying to bring together what you should know. And you're going to see, we're going to start the next circuit. We won't finish it before the break, but I just want to sort of like map it out for you, and then we'll go for a break, and then we'll see, because the next circuit's a little bit more difficult, but now we're going to have to do some calculations, okay? So first thing, let's just map it out. In other words, let's see, before we have a little bit of a meltdown, what the circuit is, and then you guys can think about it, think about what I've told you, and then we'll, we'll do it after the break, okay? So first of all, we have our current, which comes through. So A3 gets all the current, gets to this point in the circuit where R2 and R1 are. We can now split it. So some, I'm going to put it in green. I actually do not know if R2 and R1 are equal at this point. I need another color. So let's change it to, I don't know. Oh, I like the red one. Okay. So the next one. I'm hoping it doesn't destroy my diagram completely for you guys. And then they come back together. So my total current comes back out, which means total current goes through R3. And there we are. Okay. So now we go, okay. I know that A3 is 5 amps. From the circuit over here, V1 is 4 volts, which then means for me that V2 will also be 4 volts because it's in parallel. If A1 is 1 amp and my total is 5, that means this must be 4. A4 takes the whole current, so A4 is going to be 5. And then we go, okay, well, 
we have two sections in series, this parallel section and this section, and this one takes 4 volts, that takes 8 volts, which means my battery is 12 volts. And I'm pretty sure right about now some of you are going, okay, Tracy, you just lost me. I know. So, I want you to think through this. Hopefully you've downloaded the notes, so you've got them in front of you. You can look at them. You can read through the question. We'll go through exactly what we need, but I think Looney's a good place to take a break so they can just think about and process. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mine session, as you heard, Tracy said you need to process all the information she's just given you. Remember, guys, we also have Korea and Daba coming up. It's from the 20th till the 22nd of June. So come down to the Santon Convention Center. Firstly, though, you do need to go register yourselves and all your friends and everyone else you know, your cousins, their cousins, other family members, grade 10 to 12. Remember, guys, you can do that on koreandaba.co.za. Just go register yourselves. And it... it Sorry, it is at the Santon Convention Center. So just go there and you'll meet me and all your other favorite Learn Extra Live presenters. I will post all the information that you need about Korea and Daba on our Facebook page. So we'll see you straight after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. Oh, how I wish you guys are here during the break. The stuff that goes on here and we just laugh and all of that. But I'm glad you guys are having fun. I see on Facebook you guys are having fun. Just like to send a quick shout out to Apiwe. He's always watching when I'm here for maths, when I'm here for physical sciences. Whenever I'm here, he's just always on the page. Shout out to you, Apiwe. I'm so glad that you're tuning in and you're enjoying the show. Guys, I'd like to, re to remind you that I did post all the stuff that you need for After Earth. Guys. These things are just too awesome. This pen, this pen, guys, like it, it, it's got blue light. Who, who has a pen that, that switches on, guys, and just, you know, does these great things? So do remember to enter for After Earth. I did post the code word, it is live. So make sure, great things, that you enter and send yourself a chance to win these great prizes and those two tickets to go see After Earth. Remember, guys, if you don't have an extra friend, Tracy and I are willing to be your plus one. So if you win tickets and you don't have a friend, just ask me and Tracy and we'll just add on to that class one. Hey, guys, remember, guys, we also have Korea and Daba. I did post the stuff you need to know about that on our Facebook page. Go register yourselves, guys. It's a great platform to get direction on what career path you want to take if you want to be a doctor, a dentist, an artist, or if you're just confused, guys, and you don't know. It's great to go there and just get more information as to what you want to do when you're older what I want to mm. be when I grow up, all that stuff. You can go there, Santon Convention Center. We will be there, so you'll see me in person, guys, and ask me anything you want to ask me. So, Tracy, let's do this. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and, and you know, guys, if you want to enter the competition, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, and you don't want the goodie bag if you win, <laughs> it's okay. I'll take it. You can give it to me. <laughs> I want the groovy pen and I want the wristband. <laughs> it is so cool. Because like I'm just thinking gym, put the keys in, put the money in, you know, yes. go running. Very cool. So guys, enter the competition. Seriously, this is cool stuff. And the movie's gonna be really cool. Awesome. You know what I mean? And I'm loving the the idea of the Korean Daba. I seriously get yourselves down there. You're gonna say Looney's shorter than she looks on TV. Yeah. It's I'm great. Like <laughs> She's shorter than me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> but seriously, guys, you need the information. It also hopefully will inspire you to actually just keep studying, keep going, knowing that you're actually going somewhere, that it's not just because your mother's on your case and is going to smack you if you don't do well. Okay, so hang in there. All right, so before the break, we sort of mapped out or looked at the circuit, and we went, okay, we filled in some stuff, and now we need to go through the questions, all right? So the first question is, what is the reading on A2? Now, before the break, we actually worked it out, okay? We said, well, it's going to be 4 amps. But now, of course, you need to show me the calculations. You always have to show the calculations. So we're going to go, fine, we're looking at question A. Now we need to write it out. Let's do it in purple. I like the purple. So we're doing question A. We want the reading on A2. There we go. That means we're looking for I2. And my total, which is I1, so we keep the, oh, sorry, it's I3. It's the convention given to us in the circuit. So I3 is my total. So I3 is going to be equal to I2 plus I1. And I3 was 5. I2 is what I'm looking for. I1 was 1. 
That means I2 oops, equals 4 amps. Okay? That could be 2 marks, could be 3 marks, all depends on the, your examiner for that. Okay? So we're sorted. We've now proven that it's 4 amps. We're happy. What is the reading on V2? Well, we went and looked and said, look at that. I've already got it. It's 4 volts. Why did we say it was 4 volts? Because it's in parallel, and it's in parallel with V1. So all we have to do is write it in. So we can say, well, V2 equal to V1, which is equal to 4 volts. Nice and easy. Oh, we're loving this right now. Question C. Now they say, what is the reading on A4? We worked that out as well. Can you see why we do this? Because it actually helps us. So we said A3, A4 equal because they're both in series. So I4, which is equal to I3, equal to 5 amps. We're happy bunnies right now. Now we get to the fun question. All right. Calculate the resistance of R1, R2, and R3. R1, R2, R3. Now look what they've done, great tens. This is what makes this question so nice. Is because I know the current through R2, I know the voltage for R2. I know the current through R1, I know the voltage of R1. I know the voltage of R3, and I know the current through it. All I have to do is put it into the equation. And this is where the, the naming or the subscripts becomes really important, okay? So if I'm looking for R1, from our diagram, we say that's V1 divided by I1. So we recognize and we go, well, that means it's 4 divided by 2, 2 ohms. We're happy. When we look for R2, it's going to be V2 divided by I2. And V2 was also 4, but the current through it was 4, so it's 1 amp. Okay? Now we're going to do R3. R3 is V3 divided, and you can use I4 or I3, it doesn't matter, because it's the same value, so that means it's 8 divided by 5, which gives me 1, whoops, I'm lying to you, 1,6 ohms. Okay, that wasn't so bad, that was fairly straightforward. You did need to work out R3 again. You couldn't actually minus or add or anything here because we didn't find out any totals. So even though the circuit looks fairly and it's not actually. Okay? So, one more. Okay? You guys are doing great. Let's just stick with me. We're going to do the same thing. Now it says to us, well, before we actually draw anything in this one, we've got to look at something very, very carefully. We have open circuits. We have switches. At this point in time, all three switches are open. No current blowing. Nothing. Okay? The only place we could possibly get any sort of reading is if I put a voltmeter over the batteries. That's the only thing that would happen. Okay? Otherwise, really, this, there's nothing I can do at this point because nothing is giving me a reading. All right? So we go, great. So now we actually can't do anything until I read the question. So now it says to me, give the reading on each of the ammeters, so A1, 2, and 3, and 4, in the diagram when, number 1, only switch 1 is closed. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's take these out. And we go, okay, they tell me switch 1 is closed. Okay, so let's take... My red, switch one is closed, current comes, current comes, current comes, problem. Nowhere for it to go. Okay? Switch two and switch three are open. This is not a complete circuit. That means current cannot flow. So that means A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 all have the same reading, which is zero. Okay, and that's exactly how we write it. So for question one, we go, well, for question A, we say, fine, I1 is equal to I2, which is equal to I3, 
which is equal to I4, and I think there's five of them, hey? Which is equal to I5, zero. It's not a closed circuit. There's nothing we can do, okay? Cool. A is done. Now they say switch one and two are closed. So we go, okay, let's go back here. Let's just quickly take out, I put a whole bunch of red dots everywhere. Okay, switch one and two is closed. So that's now closed. We like it. And what do they say to us? A meter A3 reads three amps. So actually what happens, and I'm going to do it like this so you can see, current comes along. Okay, Ooh, come now. Sure. Okay, take the paper. All right. Current comes along. This is my current. Comes here, comes here, comes here. Oh, look, there we go. And it's happy. And all around it goes, and around it goes. It's all very exciting. Okay, Ooh, look at that. Okay, so if you don't have color pens, you can do it this way. So we go, okay, look here. Series circuit. One path. One ammeter in the circuit says that it's worth three amps, and that's I3. That means A1 reads I 3 amps, A2 reads 3 amps, A5 reads 3 amps, but nothing through I4. I4 is open, no current can go through it, so I4 still reads 0. Okay? So let's do, oh, and I lost, oh, anyway, it doesn't matter. B, I4 equals zero amps, but I1 is going to be equal to I3, which is equal to I2 and I5, and those three are equal to I3, and they said it reads, let's just see, three amps. We're doing okay so far, okay? We haven't done anything too difficult, so we go, that's cool. All right. Tracy, yes. I have a quick question. Yeah, okay. I'm so sorry. No? Um, up here is asking, for R1, why did you d divide by 2 and not 1 for question 3D? For R2, okay, let me see where R2 is again. R1. R1. Why did you divide by 2 and not 1? Ah, someone's on the board. Yes. Because <laughs> I read my notes wrong. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. I'm just making sure you're awake, just so you know. <laughs> so, well, who was that? Apiwe Makatini. Apiwe. Well done. Just so you know, we are human. Just don't tell anyone. All right. So, let's just quickly correct that. Sorry, sweetie. You are absolutely 100% correct. So, it's actually... 4 ohms, and this is why you need to double check. And I promise you, if you look at my notes, because I, I actually do all the memos beforehand, I actually have it as 4 divided by 1 on here. So it was just a simple mistake. It's a mistake, and it happens. I was getting excited. I love circuits, and I'll blame the glasses. <laughs> I think I need a new prescription. But well done, sweetie. Thank you for making me correct it. I do appreciate that. That's brilliant. I'm glad you're on the ball. I'm glad you're actually doing it and double checking. That's actually brilliant. Okay, so let's carry on. I know I'm getting all excited. Okay, before we do C, we're going to mess up my circuit again. So I'm just going to quickly rub all my scribbles out because we don't want these anymore. All right. Now they say to us, okay, for C, when all the switches are closed, so we go fine. Okay, all the switches are closed, so that's closed, that's closed, that's closed. So now what happens is now we've added resistors in parallel, okay? So first let's see what happens to the current. So let's go over here. Current comes here, comes here, comes here. Now there's an option, so we go fine. Some of it's going to be through R1, which goes through R3. Some of it's going to go through, let's do it in this color. Okay, so we have a parallel section. We like that. That means the current splits, which then tells me that A3 and A4, if I add them together, it's going to give me A1, A2, and A5, because if I take this and I put it through this one, and there we go. Parallel circuit. Okay, 
we're doing quite well, but we're not done. Let's write down what we were given. They say when all the switches are closed, A2 reads 6 amps. So A2 is this one that reads 6 amperes, sorry. And A3 reads 2. Okay. Now, first of all, we look through this and we go, okay, well, A1, A2, A5, they all have the same squiggly yellow line through it. There was 6. So that's 6. And that's 6. We're quite happy with that. But A3 is 2 amps and we need A4 and we've got, well, we've got resistors that are in parallel. That means the current divides. The total current needs to be 6. There's 2 over here, which leaves 4. We need to set this out properly, okay? So we go, alrighty, so let's go over here and we say, fine. We're doing part C. And we know what I2 is, and I1 is going to be equal to I5. Both of those are equal to I2, which happens to be 6 amps, okay? Now, I2 is going to be equal to I3, which was the one parallel section, plus I4, so 6 is equal to 2 plus I4. So I4 is equal to 4 amperes. Okay? You're still with me now. Nice question. How will the reading vary on each of the ammeters if the resistance of R3 is reduced? So now we look back and we go, okay, let's assume that it's now still all closed, okay? Because they haven't said to us that we've changed something to the circuit. But over here we take R3. R3 symbol is for a rheostat. Remember, rheostat is a variable resistor. Rheostat's like a um, dimmer switch in your lounge for your lights, okay? You can switch them higher or lower, makes them dimmer or brighter. It's the same thing. We say it controls resistance. So they say to you, what would happen... If I make this smaller, it is a resistor that is connected in series, okay? If I make R3 smaller, that means total resistance gets smaller. And if my total resistance gets smaller, then my current must increase, which means every single ammeter will have a bigger reading. They have to because the total current will increase. Total voltage which comes from my cell doesn't change. And remember R equals V over I. So if we look at it and we go well R equals V over I. That's a constant. V is a constant. So if R gets smaller I must get bigger because watch I can manipulate it to look like this. And if R gets bigger, I get smaller. If R gets smaller, I get bigger. Okay? So what we've done in that last question is we said, fine, if we reduce the value of R3, then what happens to the readings? Okay? And they can, uh, they can definitely ask you to explain it. So R total... Ooh, man. Okay. R total will decrease... Okay, R total will decrease, therefore I total increases, therefore all, now watch how we're going to put it, all ammeter readings increase. And that's, of course, assuming that we keep the same switches closed. If we had to change that and we change some of the switches that are open, we would get exactly the same thing, actually, as long as, one of, as, long as either switch 2 or 3 are open, we can actually get the current going through it. And grade 10s, I know you're looking at my diagram right now and going, well, Tracy, you know what, that's a mess. I understand that for some of you, that, that is going to like, drive you mad. It's okay, guys. 
You're doing this on your question paper. It doesn't matter. No one has to see that. That is for you. So make use of it, grade tens, okay? I'm about to say goodbye. I've got come to the end of my time. Remember, practice, 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 practice. That's the only way you can deal with circuits, okay? And just a quick reminder, if you're on Curio, there will be a code given to you later. So hang fire, probably be on Facebook so that you can go and do some questions, okay? But that's all for me. Good luck for your exams. I'll see you next term. Mindsetters has been great. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've posted some information. Some people have been asking me about ordering DVDs and books and all of that. There is a link on our Facebook page. But until then, guys, see you same time, same place next week. Remember to learn more and learn extra. Goodbye.